This is the day the Lord has made. We'll rejoice and be glad therein. As we come to the third night of revival, what a mighty God we serve. We're praising him even now in advance for the word that we will receive tonight. We're worshiping from the sanctuary of the Mount Bethel Missionary Baptist Church, Keatville, Louisiana. Reverend Maurice White is going to be our evangelist tonight, and he is preaching the anointing, the power is upon him. And the people of God say amen. As we come to worship this morning, this evening, we're going to worship using the hymn, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Let us stand together and praise him. Glory to the Lamb. Oh, 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 I am on the battlefield of my Lord. I am on the battlefield of my Lord. Oh, my Lord. And I promised him that I, I would serve him till I die. I am on Oh my Lord, was alone and idle. I was alone and idle. I was a sinner too. And I heard the voice from heaven saying, There is good to do. I took my master's hand. And I joined the Christian band. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. Well, I am, I am on the battlefield yes, I am. for my Lord. For my Lord. I, I am on the battlefield oh, yes, for my, my Lord. Lord. Oh, 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 I'd serve him till I die. I 
standing for the scripture this, this night, 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14, 2 Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Word of God for the people of God. You may be seated in this presence as we prepare now for the session coming to the throne of grace. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Brother Goins, I think they're pointing it. Let the church say amen. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. It's prayer time. Let us pray. <clears throat> Eternal God, our Father in heaven, we come now humbly before your throne of grace, interceding, dear God, on behalf of these, your people, here at Mount Bethel Number One Baptist Church, Keithville, Louisiana. We come with thanksgiving of our hearts, dear Lord, Thanking you for this third night of revival. We thank you for the evangelists you have sent to us to break the bread of life. We thank you, dear God, for all of these years in this sanctuary tonight. We pray that their ears will hear the word of Lord and be receptive to it. We thank you, dear God, for all of these hearts in this sanctuary, that they will receive the word and internalize it in their hearts. And we thank you, dear God, for all these bodies in this sanctuary, that they will live out that word that they will hear in their daily lives. We thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. And now, oh, Lord, we, we know that we're not here to stay forever. But we know, dear God, that You'll keep us while we're here. And that you'll prepare the place for us. Eternal in the heaven. Glory be to the Father. Forgive us, dear Lord, for all of our sins and our transgressions. Always on us as that child. We'll forever give you praise. We'll give you glory. Forever and ever and ever. For you are truly worthy of all of our praise. This is the humble servant prayer. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And this church will say, Amen. 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 Praise the name of the Lord tonight. Let us stand and praise Him together with the music ministry tonight. How many of you know God is real? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's our hymn tonight. Yes, God. Is real. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's like pure gold. Oh, 
are some things I may not know. Hallelujah. I may not know. There are some places, there are some places I can go. But I'm sure of something.
name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. The evangelist is in the house. Hallelujah. God has spoken and the people say, Amen. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. How we pray the anointing. We pray the power tonight. Hallelujah. Fresh wind and fresh fire. That the Lord will empower again this man of God. Pastor Maurice White, Pastor of Zion Travelers Church, Ruston, Louisiana. God's called, God's anointed, God's appointed, God's chosen vessel. And how blessed we are to have him come and share with us. We praise the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 Let the church say, Preach. Pastor White, preach, preach, Pastor White, hallelujah, he's coming in his own way, hallelujah, hallelujah. You ought to put your hands together tonight and give God praise, for he's worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun until the setting of the same. It's been a good day, brothers and sisters. It's been a, a good week as God has blessed us to come and uh, to hear what he has to say to us through his word. I want to once again thank Pastor Batley for extending the invitation for me uh, to come and to share with you my very strong convictions concerning the good news, the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Will you help me on tonight? Oh, amen. Will you help me? Zen. Grace. How. The sound that saved a wretch like me. testimony on tonight. Grace 
copy of God's word on tonight in the book of 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter 9. Praise, praise God. Praise, praise God. Praise, praise God. Praise, praise God, praise, praise God, praise, praise God, <coughs> praise, praise God. If he's been good to you on tonight, you ought to praise God. Praise God. Praise. Praise God. Praise. Praise God. Praise God. Second Samuel chapter 9 on tonight. I want to look at that entire chapter on tonight, but I'll read in your hearing uh, verses 1 through 5 of Second Samuel chapter 9. If you're there on tonight, then say amen. Now David said, Is there still anyone who is left of the house of Saul, that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake. And there was a servant of the house of Saul whose name was Ziba. So when they had called him to David, the king said to him, Are you Ziba? He said, At your service. Then the king said, Is there not still someone of the house of Saul to whom I sh may show the kindness of God. And Ziba said to the king, There is still a son of Jonathan who is lame in his feet. So the king said to him, Where is he? And Ziba said to the king, Indeed, he's in the house of Mekur, the son of Amiel in Lodabar. Then King David sent and brought him out of the house of Mekur, the son of Emiel, from Lodabar. I want to preach from the thought and subject on tonight, my brothers and sisters, with the Lord's help and with your prayers. How did I make it out of Lodabar? You may be seated in the Lord's presence on tonight. <clears throat> How did I make it out of Lodabar? I want to begin by saying on tonight, brothers and sisters, that at some point in all of our lives, we must learn to celebrate divine movements and migrations. Every born-again believer, every blood-washed saint, every child of God, every now and then ought to take the time to thank God for where he has brought you from to where he has brought you to. When we study the scriptures, and we find those in the word of God who God place to another because of his grace and his mercy. I believe there are those in this place on tonight, brothers and sisters, 
who have a testimony of liberation like the children of Israel. Well, if they were here on tonight, they would testify to the fact that God brought them from the land of Egypt to the land of Canaan. God delivered them from a place of oppression, persecution, and affliction and brought them not to just any land, but God brought them to a good land and a large land that flowed with milk and honey. And I believe there are some witnesses in Mount Bethel on tonight who will testify with me that in order to get us from where we were to where we are now, that God had to loose the shackles that had us bound. If you don't have a testimony of liberation like the children of Israel, then maybe on tonight you have a testimony of redemption like Naomi and Ruth. Because if Naomi and Ruth were here on tonight, they will testify that God brought them from the land of Moab back to the land of Bethlehem. They would testify on tonight that God brought them from that place of Moab where they suffered loss and they had to endure wickedness to Bethlehem, the house of bread. I believe all of us on tonight at one point or another in our lives have been just like Naomi and Ruth. We lost a loved one. We sunk to the depths of human sorrow. But our testimony on tonight is that God turned our sorrow into joy. God turned our mourning into dancing. And our testimony is like that of Naomi and Ruth that God provided a kinsman redeemer by the name of Boaz. Boaz was their kinsman redeemer, but Jesus Christ is our kinsman redeemer who purchased us not with the blood of bulls, pigeons, and turtle doves, but he purchased us with his own precious blood. And do I have some witnesses in Mount Bethel on tonight who will testify that you've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ? What can wash away my sins? What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. As I press my way on tonight, brothers and sisters, if you don't have a testimony of liberation, if you don't have a testimony of redemption, then you should have a testimony of adoption. Because it's in our text on tonight that we meet a, a man by the name of Mephibosheth uh, who is the grandson of King Saul and the son of Saul's son Jonathan. This uh, boy Mephibosheth, he is lame in his feet and he is uh, living in the ghettos of a place called Lodabar. And if Mephibosheth were here on tonight, his testimony would be that God brought him out of the ghettos and the bottoms of Lodabar and brought him to Jerusalem to sit at the king's table and be a part of the king's family by way of adoption. Ah, this word Lodabar, it is an interesting word. <clears throat> it is a loaded word, Pastor Hunter, in the Hebrew because this word Lodabar literally in the Hebrew means it is for not. Lodabar literally means it is for nothing. Lodabar is a place called Nowhere. Lodabar is a place where there is no word. Lodabar is a place where there are no 
pastures. And I want to make the argument on tonight that, that at one point or another in all of our lives, we have spent some time in Lodabar. We have been in some places that were called nowhere. We've had some moments in our lives where there was no word. And we surely have been in some places where there were no green pastures. Oh, come on, keep it real with me on tonight. I need some folk who will testify that you've had to spend some time in Lodabar. Maybe your loader bar was the world. Maybe your loader bar was the streets. Maybe your loader bar was a bad relationship or a bad marriage. Maybe your loader bar was the crack house. Maybe your loader bar was the jail house. Maybe your loader bar is was your career or a job you were stuck on. But I came to tell you on tonight that we serve a God who can deliver you from your loader bar. I, I need y'all to help me to preach this along in here because I believe there are some on tonight who will testify that God turned your situation around. God is able to take you from nowhere to somewhere. God is able to take you from a place of nowhere to a place where you meditate on his word day and night. I need some witnesses in Mount Bethel who will testify that God can take you from no pastures to making you lie down in green pastures and he will lead you beside the still waters. Is there anybody who can shout on tonight? Is there anybody who can praise God because the Lord delivered you from Lodabar? And the question we have to ask ourselves on tonight as we examine this text, how did we make it out of Lodabar? You ought to ask yourself that question on tonight. How did I make it out of Loader bar. How did I get a pl get from nowhere to somewhere? How did I get to a place where there was no word to? I, I'm studying the word of God and God is uh, uh, downloading and depositing his word into my life on a daily basis. How did I get from no pastures to green pastures? I believe the answer is in our text on tonight, brothers and sisters, because there is a word that shows up over and over again in our text. And when a word shows up over and over again in a passage, God is trying to speak to us. So we got out of Lodabar not because we've done everything right. We didn't get out of Lodabar because we've been perfect, but we got out of Lodabar because of kindness. Because over and over again in 2 Samuel chapter 9, the word kindness shows up over and over again. That, that word kindness used there in the Hebrew, it means the favor of God. It means the grace of God. It means the mercy of God. Y'all should have been shouting all over this building instead of just looking at me because if it had not been for God's mercy, if it had not been for God's grace, if it had not been for God loving us when we were unlovable, if it had not been for the Lord strengthening us when we were weak, if it had not been for God, brothers and sisters, picking us up and bringing us out, we would still be stuck in Lodabar. Somebody ought to praise God that when we were unfaithful to God, God was faithful to us and delivered us out of Lodabar. How did I make it out of Lodabar? It was because of God's kindness. 
And when we examine this text on the night, the first thing this text says to us concerning the kindness of God that got us out of Lodabar, the first thing this text says to us, number one on tonight, that we got out of Lodabar because of undeniable kindness. Somebody, someone was kind to us in such a way that nobody could deny it. The Bible says that, that King David asked the question, is there still someone alive from the house of Saul that I can be kind to for Jonathan's sake? I want to make the argument on tonight, brothers and sisters, uh, that so often, uh, uh, Pastor Lee Arthur, when we study the life of David, we often put emphasis on the fact that David was a great warrior. We often put emphasis on the fact that he was a, a magnificent musician and he was the sweet psalmist of Israel who wrote the book of Psalms. Uh, but I want to highlight the fact on tonight that David was a man after God's own heart. And I want to suggest to us on tonight that when the heart of God is beating in our bosom, when the heart of God is thumping and keeping cadence in our chest, brothers and sisters, we will show kindness to people and in places where you least expect it. It's interesting to me on tonight, as I look at this text, uh, that, that David does not say uh, that I'm looking for someone from the house of Samuel. You, you would have thought that he would have been looking for somebody from the house of Samuel because uh, Samuel was the one who showed up in Bethlehem that day uh, and anointed him to be king over Israel. Samuel uh, was Israel's last judge. He was a prophet and a priest. He was David's uh, spiritual advisor. But David does not say, I'm looking for somebody from Samuel's house. Uh, but he says, I'm looking for somebody from the house of Saul. That, that's strange to me on tonight. And I'm pretty sure that's strange to some of you. Uh, he's looking for somebody from Saul's house to be kind to. But you got to understand, uh, Saul was always jealous of David. When he heard the wind of the angel singing, uh, Saul has killed his thousands, but David his ten thousands. There was uh, envy and jealousy in his heart. Uh, he often pursued and chased David and tried to take David's life. That David found himself hiding in the caves of Adullam. Uh, he found himself uh, uh, scribbling on walls and doors. He found himself uh, with drool running down his beard as he played the role of, the, of a crazy man. David found himself ducking and dodging javelins uh, but but yet he says, is there anybody still left from the house of Saul that I can show kindness to? I want to tell you on tonight that our God often works in mysterious ways. God often takes the pain and the hurt that others send into our lives to position us into a place of purpose where when they dead and gone, you have to take care of their children's children. That's why you got to be careful how you treat folk. You got to be careful uh, how you deal with people uh, because you don't know uh, how they're going to have to take care of your children's children uh, when you are dead and gone. I'm reminded of the words of John in the book of 1 John chapter 3 where, where John says, we know that we have passed from death to life because we have love for the brethren. He says, we ain't got to wonder about whether or not we saved. He says, we know that we are saved. We know that we are children of God. We know that we've passed from death to life when we love our brothers and 
our sisters. So, but I want to raise the question to the saved folk on tonight. How do you know when you've grown deeper in the word of God? How do you know when you've grown up in all the things of God? I want to suggest to you on tonight that, that our growth in the Lord goes two directions. Uh, we grow deeper like a root uh, and we grow up like a shoot. Uh, and I want to suggest on to us on tonight, brothers and sisters, that you know that you've grown deeper in the Lord and you've grown up in all things. When you learn how to help those who can't help you, help those uh, who won't help you uh, and help those who didn't help you uh, when you need needed help. Uh, David says I ain't looking for a friend to help uh, but I'm looking for someone from uh, my enemy's household uh, from uh, the house of Saul to be kind to. Uh, watch this not for Saul's sake but for the sake of Jonathan. <laughs> for the sake of Jonathan. Jonathan. Jonathan was, was Saul's son. And Jonathan was also David's friend. And the Bible teaches us that, 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 that David and Jonathan, y'all, they, they, they loved one another. They, they loved the other as much as they loved themselves. The Bible says that their spirits were knit together. Jonathan and David are an example of, of true relationship. True fellowship, true companionship, true partnership, and even true kinship. Even though they didn't have the same blood running through their veins, they were just like brothers. All you know, I grew up in, in Shreveport, in the south side of Shreveport, in the Cedar Grove neighborhood, in a subdivision called, called Greenbrook. I got two older brothers. My oldest brother is, is Charlie White Jr. And then my other brother is, is, is Cedric, Cedric, Cedric White. And, and Cedric, he's, he's a little older than I am. And the neighborhood we grew up in, uh, let's just say my brother ran the neighborhood. My brother ran, he ran the block and he would often uh, get in trouble got so bad his senior year of high school, uh, he was trying to decide what he was going to do with his life. Uh, my daddy said to him, you either go to the Navy, because if you don't go in the Navy, you're going to end up in the penitentiary. And he went to the Navy, and the Lord changed his, his life. Uh, but I remember when, when he, he graduated from high school, and he went to the Navy, and there were still fellas in the neighborhood who thought they were bad. And because uh, they were a little younger than my brother and a little older than me, they, they thought they could pick on me. And one day they decided that they were going to, to mess with me. Yeah. But there was uh, an OG sitting out there, and he was a friend of my brother. And he said, no, y'all better not do that. Uh, because that's Cedric White's little brother. Uh, they, they didn't stop messing with me because I was Maurice. Uh, but they stopped messing with me uh, because I was Cedric White's little brother. Uh, Cedric White was my elder brother. Uh, I stopped by here to tell you on tonight that uh, we have an elder brother. Uh, and his name uh, is Jesus Christ. Uh, and it's because of the covenant relationship that we have with God through his son, Jesus Christ, uh, that we've got a better covenant based upon better promises. Uh, God says, uh, I won't put my word on tone st stone tablets anymore, but God says, I'll put my word in your heart. Uh, God says, I'm going to do a new thing. Uh, he says, your sins and your iniquities uh, will I remember no more. I, I need somebody who's experienced God's uh, undeniable kindness on tonight uh, who will say, preacher, I'm here not because of a second chance, uh, but I'm here because because God gave me another chance. He was kind to me because of my elder brother, Jesus Christ. That's how I made it out of Lodabar. We made it out of Lodabar, y'all. Because of undeniable kindness. 
But if you walk with me through the text on tonight, we made it out of Lodabar because of undeserved kindness. Undeserved kindness. <laughs> Let me set the record straight on tonight. If you're going to get out of Lodabar, or if you made it out of Lodabar, it's because of those twins, grace and mercy. Anybody here on tonight know something about God's grace? God's grace is his unmerited favor. God giving us what we don't deserve. Anybody here on tonight knows something about God's mercy. God withholding from us what we rightly divert what we rightly deserve. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't have made it out of Lodabar without the grace and mercy of God. The text says on tonight that David is looking for someone from the house of Saul that he can show kindness to for Jonathan's sake. And one of David's servants said to him, there's a fellow by the name of Ziba who's a servant from the house of Saul. He would know if there's someone that you can be kind to for Jonathan's sake. They call Ziba to the palace. He stands for the king. And the king asks, are you Ziba? He says, Yes, I am, and at your service, king. He says, is there anybody still left from the house of Saul that we can bless for Jonathan's sake? Ziba says to him, there is somebody. His name is Mephibosheth, and he's down in Lodabar. I want to make the argument on tonight that we should not, uh, we should not be in a hurry on tonight. We should not... Uh, be in a hurry to get to Lodabar and get Mephibosheth out of Lodabar without paying attention to the service of Ziba. Uh, because here's what I've discovered, brothers and sisters, uh, uh, that everybody needs a Ziba in their life. Uh, I, I like that name Ziba in the Hebrew. It means a station. It means a, a place. Uh, I want to make the argument on tonight that God uh, puts us in different stations in life. Uh, God puts us in different places in life uh, because if people are going to get out of Lodabar, it's not going to be done by working miracles, uh, but it's going to be done by the work of ministry. It's going to take people like you and me who can praise God for our own deliverance from Lodabar, uh, who's willing to go and get somebody else uh, out the ghettos and dumps of Lodabar and tell them that Jesus loves them uh, and cares them. Uh, it's going to take us going beyond these four walls uh, in Keyville, in South Shreveport, here and there, in Keecha, in Stonewall, to fill these seats, letting people know uh, that Jesus Jesus died for you, uh, but he didn't stay dead. He rose uh, on the third day morning. And if you're going to go to Lodabar, you can't be scared of COVID. Let me say that again. You can't be scared of COVID. I've discovered that the only place you can catch COVID now is at church. Because people go to the grocery store. They go to the football games. They go to school, do any and everything else, but won't come to the house of the Lord. It's undeserved kindness. Ziba goes down to, to Lodabar to get Mephibosheth. And what's interesting to me in the text on tonight is that he doesn't tell Mephibosheth what the king wants. Because Mephibosheth is, is lame in his feet. I imagine them placing him on a cart. And they're now taking him to see the king. And I, I, if you allow me to use my spiritual imagination on tonight. That, <coughs> excuse me. I, I believe that, that, that Mephibosheth had some, some thoughts running through his head. <coughs> he probably thought to himself, I'm as good as dead. He probably thought to himself, well... It's been a good run, but well, this is the end of the road for me. Because he was probably certain that once he got 
to the palace uh, that the king was going to take his life. <laughs> But oh, brothers and sisters, when he got to the palace, he learned quickly that he would not lose his life, but that he would get a new lease on life. Y'all should have shouted right there. Because there are a lot of us in here on tonight who will keep it real. We've been at a point in our lives where we thought it was the end of the road. Uh, we thought we wouldn't be able to go any further. We thought it was over for us. Uh, but God was gracious and merciful. And we didn't lose our lives. But God gave us a new lease on life. The Bible says that he comes in and, and he falls before the king. He falls before the king, y'all, because he, he now learns that he's going to get a new lease on life. He, he's getting another opportunity at life. He, he's being taken out of the ghettos of Lodabar, and Mephibosheth understands that this kindness is undeserved. He understands, brothers and sisters, that it's undeserved because when he checks his family tree, on Ancestry.com, it does not say that he are, he's descendants of, of Boaz and Ruth. Uh, it does not say that he's descendant of Obed and Jesse and of David, but it says he is descendant of Saul and Jonathan. Uh, he is a threat to the monarchy. Uh, he should be killed. He should be wiped off the face of the earth. Uh, but I want you to know uh, that not even a threat from an enemy can thwart the promises of God. Uh, because God promised that one of David's descendants would remain on the throne. He th it's undeserved. Because he's a threat to the monarchy. But then it's undeserved, y'all, because he's lame in his feet. He's crippled. He is disfigured. He is disabled. And the culture of that day suggested that anybody who was crippled or lame or disfigured could not be in the presence of the king. And not only that, he considered himself to be a dead dog. Oh, but listen to what the king says to him. Uh, you, you, you may be from the enemy's family. You, you, you may be crippled and lame. You, you even may be a dead dog, but I'm going to give you a seat at the king's table. In 1967, uh, racial tension was very high in the United States between black folks and white folks. Uh, and even in the year of 1967, brothers and sisters, it was illegal uh, for a black person to marry a white person. And in 1967, a movie came out starring uh, this, this man uh, who was named Prentice, who went to Hawaii and he met this uh, woman named Joanne who was 10 years younger than him. Uh, the man Prentice was black and Joanna was a white girl and they only knew each other for 10 days in Hawaii and they got engaged. Uh, uh, when, they, when their vacation was over, they went back to San Francisco uh, and they planned a dinner where uh, Prentice's parents and Joanna's parents uh, could meet one another. Joanna's parents showed up first and they were shocked. Uh, their 27-year-old white daughter was marrying this 37-year-old black man. Uh, they were shocked. They were surprised. They were stunned. Uh, they thought that it shouldn't be. And then Prentice's black parents showed up. Uh, can y'all imagine how that black mama and daddy felt in 1967 uh, to see their black son marrying a white girl 10 years younger than him and then he had only been knowing her for 10 days? Uh, they thought Prentice was crazy. But the name of that movie was uh, Guess Who's uh, Coming to Dinner. Uh, I said that to say on tonight, when you came in the church on tonight, uh, somebody thought it shouldn't be. Uh, when you showed up on the parking lot, somebody said you shouldn't be here. Uh, they know your story. They know your history. They know your failures and your faults. Uh, but my testimony is on tonight. Uh, even though I don't deserve it, uh, guess who's coming to dinner? Uh, even though I'm unworthy on tonight, uh, guess who's coming to dinner? Uh, you ought to shout on tonight uh, because you've got failures and faults and fears. Uh, but in spite of all of that, uh, God has given
giving you a seat at the king's table. Uh, somebody ought to shout. Uh, somebody ought to praise God uh, because of God's grace, uh, because of God's undeserved kindness. Uh, for the wages of sin is death, uh, but the gift of God uh, is eternal life through Jesus uh, Christ our Lord. Uh, somebody ought to shout over God's gift. Uh, somebody ought to shout on tonight uh, for we are saved by grace through faith. Uh, it is not of ourselves lest any man should boast. Uh, not by works of righteousness uh, which we have done but according to his mercy he saved us uh, by the washing of regeneration uh, and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. Uh, I need some saved folk. Uh, some sanctified folk uh, who can praise God on tonight uh, because you are saved. Uh, life now is sweet and my joy is complete, y'all. Not because of the money in my bank account. Not because of the house I live in. Not because of material things. But life now is sweet because I'm, I'm saved. Anybody glad on tonight you made it out of, out of Lodabar? <clears throat> we made it out of Lodabar because of undeniable kindness. We made it out of Lodabar, brothers and sisters, because of undeserved kindness. But now I'm out of here and on my way back to Ruston. When I tell you on tonight, we made it out of Lodabar because of unlimited kindness. David asked the question, is there anybody from the house of Saul? that I can bless for Jonathan's sake. And they said, yeah, there's somebody, yeah, down in Lodabar. And his name is Mephibosheth. Uh, and the Bible says to us uh, that David sent a uh, soft servant Zeba down uh, to Lodabar to get Mephibosheth. Uh, yeah, David sent Zeba, uh, but when we were in Lodabar, uh, yeah, God uh, sent his son, uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, is there anybody glad on tonight uh, that God uh, sent his son, Jesus? For I heard Paul say uh, in Galatians chapter 4, that when the fullness of time had come, uh, God uh, sent his son, Jesus, uh, yeah, made of a woman, uh, made under the law, uh, to redeem us who were under the law, uh, that we could become God's children uh, by way of adoption. Uh, and is there anybody glad on tonight uh, that God saved your soul? Uh, is there anybody glad on tonight that you are a child of God? Uh, yeah, yeah, David uh, rescued, uh, yeah, Mephibosheth from Lodabar. Uh, and God rescued us uh, from our Lodabar. Uh, because we were on our way to hell uh, with no God on our side. We wasn't fit to live uh, and we show sure one ready to die. Uh, but Jesus came uh, and he saved our souls. Uh, but I'm so glad uh, that God didn't stop there. Uh, because just like David, uh, yet yeah, rescue Loda, rescue Mephibosheth from Lodabar. Uh, he then restored to him uh, all the land uh, that he had took from uh, King Saul. Uh, and that's what I love uh, about our God. Uh, he didn't just rescue us uh, from our sins, uh, but whatever we lost, uh, God uh, restored it. Uh, is there anybody here tonight uh, that's glad uh, that God is able uh, to restore what you lost? Is there anybody glad tonight uh, that God will uh, give you double for your trouble? Uh, God will uh, open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. Uh, God will uh, 
press it down shake it together and make it run over I don't know about you but I'm thankful that we serve a God who's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think can I get a witness on tonight it's unlimited kindness God rescued us God restored us but then God gave us a seat at his table he received us into his family just like David uh, received Mephibosheth uh, into his family. Uh, he says, I got you out of Lodabar. He says to him, I'm going to restore uh, the land that you lost. Uh, but for all your days, uh, I'm going to give you uh, a seat at the table. Uh, anybody thankful uh, that God has given us uh, a seat at the table? Uh, Anybody glad on tonight uh, that we are part of God's family? Uh, can I preach in this place on tonight? Uh, if you're going to be uh, a part of God's family, you can't just be born one time, uh, but you got to be born again. Uh, do I have some born again folk? Uh, do I have some folk who've been sanctified, uh, who've been washed in the blood of the Lamb? Uh, I'm a part of God's family because Jesus paid the price. Anybody here know that he died for you? Anybody here know that he gave his hands to the nails? Anybody here know he gave his feet to the spikes? And he died, he died, but I'm so glad on tonight that Jesus didn't stay dead is there anybody else in Mount Bethel glad on tonight that Jesus didn't stay dead but early I said early Sunday morning Jesus got up with all power anybody here know he got power power to save your soul power to change your life power to heal your body power to loose the shackles that have you bound thank you Jesus for getting me out of loader bar thank you Jesus for bringing me out can I get about 20 folk you're not too cute you're not too sophisticated you're not too stuck up but you can praise God because he got you out of load of bar I will at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth oh magnify I said oh magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together do you know his name on tonight I said do you know his name on tonight He's Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Jehovah Nisi, our victory. Jehovah Shalom, our peace. Jehovah Zikanu, our righteousness. Do you know his name on tonight? He's the lily of the valley. He's the mighty rose of Sharon. He's the bright and morning star. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's the Lamb of God. Grandma called him a bridge over troubled water. A lawyer in the courtroom. A doctor in your sick room. But if you can't remember all that, just call him Jesus. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Love my Jesus. Anybody here love the Lord? If you love him, 
say yeah. yeah. Say yeah. yeah. Say yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let the church say amen. 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 Give God the praise. Give him the praise. Thank God for this man of God. Hallelujah. Is there praise in the house? Hallelujah. been delivered out of our load of all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. His name is Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah doors of the church are open. Jesus, there's just something about that name. Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain, Jesus, 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim kings and kingdoms will all away but there's something but there's something about that name if you've never accepted him as your savior Bible says if you can confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God had raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved if you're listening to us you can accept him right where you are invite him in he's knocking at the door of your heart tell him Lord Jesus come in I know I'm a sinner, but I believe you died and rose again that I might be saved. Save me, Lord. If you can pray that, he can save you. If you've already accepted him, but you're out of fellowship with his church, You can be restored. Just say, Lord, I'm coming home. Praise the Lord tonight. We pray the anointing, the power, 
of God in your life. We thank God for sending this chosen vessel. Hallelujah. Our way. We're grateful tonight for all who have gathered in this house. All of our guests and all of these God talkers, these pastors, we thank you tonight. This is the closing night. The final word will be given. Benediction, prayer, whatever the Holy Spirit is leading the evangelist, he's going to come and bless us. Thank you, brothers. Don't forget, there is no formal offering, but you can share. The receptacles for giving are in the foyer. You can place your stewardship gift there. Let the people of God say amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Give God praise again for this preacher. Amen. Once again, thank you, Pastor Badley, for uh, the invitation again to come and share with you. This is my, my fourth, fourth year. Amen. Be with you all. He's counting. He's got a standing invitation. <laughs> You've got a standing invitation. Amen. Bless you. Thank you. Did, did, did you hear that? Hallelujah. I, I'm thanking God for your father. Amen. One of my staff members yes. when I was at Booker Washington. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm thanking God for your sister-in-law, my student. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And my teacher. Yes. God bless. And uh, mark your calendars. Hallelujah. You're coming back. Yes. Sir. Amen. Just mark your calendar. Yes. Sir. Praise Thank God. You. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good to see uh, the pastors and preachers here here on tonight. Thank you, brothers, for for coming out to share. Once again, good to see my father and my sister-in-law here on tonight. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Uh, I, I miss your brother Raymond. He's my bishop. <laughs> and thank you, bishop, for letting me come into your 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 your, your, your area on tonight. And thank you, brother Daryl, for helping me on this week. Amen. Amen. Thank you for my deacon, Deacon Grisby, Charles Grisby. Amen. Amen. Um, he he can drive anywhere, everywhere. He like my brother. Charlie, uh, he'll drive from coast to coast. Amen. I can't even drive up the road good. <laughs> Amen. Well, thank you so much. Will you stand to your feet? Till we meet. meet. Till we meet. Oh.
you faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory majesty dominion and power now and forever let us all sing together Go in peace, brothers and sisters. <laughs> 